Hey everybody, it's Nam 2019, and uh, he just hugged me. Yeah, I do. That's very un English. I, I feel a lot of love for you, man. I got that. Um, so we're on the PRS stand, funnily enough, um, and we're not in the back cave anymore. We're kind of exposed. We're in, in the, the main back thing. Back cave. Yeah, isn't that what you call your little um, you where you curtain stand. things off and do uncomfortable things to people? That. Well, to me, normally when Isn't we come out here. Is that why you hug me? <laughs> wow. Now, look, I have a question for you. Have you ever seen anything like that on that price point guitar ever? It's super quilted maple, isn't it? I mean, give super me a break. quilted. This, this magnetic thing is like making me get away. I know from it's, it's, it's opposite subtract okay. or the opposite of that. Something. So, what what was the thinking behind doing like a natural top and? and then staining the back We do that green. a lot with Just PRS guitars the other way, where we have a stained top and yep. a natural back, right? But I think it's gorgeous. This came, um, originally we had done some of these in private stock, right? So, I, I don't know, I, look, the guitar sounds and plays beautifully, maybe double or triple its money value for what yep. you're getting, right? Are you selling any of these? We, these we sold, we, we're just coming to the end of the outgoing series, yeah, yeah. and I guess we'll shortly receive. But then they sold really, really well. Really, really well. What, what's um, specification wise, what have you changed from the sort of old series into the new? Or is there too many things? Well, there are teeny, teeny changes in the bracing, but mm -hmm. a lot of it's cosmetic, and um, we're always working on making sure the necks feel right and the, the thing sounds right. And they're gentle updates. I'm sure that you can find a violin maker that, if you look at something from five years ago, looks almost the same as what he's done today, but it, there are minor little adjustments in it. The biggest thing on this guitar is, is the wood choices and yeah. the colors that we've done. Uh, they look cool. Well, we'll properly video those back on Anderton's TV in a month or two when they start to arrive. Um, do, do all your customers understand the breadth? I mean, you have turned your video channel into a worldwide event. You've done a great so job. We, we are the Wikipedia of useless guitar information and uh, juvenile banter, I think. That's what that's what we are. Okay, well, that's self-deprecating stuff. People <laughs> watch it because they get actually good information from you. So, um, well, it's very kind of you to say so. Um, I want to talk a bit about what you've done on your guitar, your specific own one. To did you hear uh, us play last night in the Hilton? Nope. Okay, I gave the guitar to Howard Lease, who's the Bad Company guitar player. Yep. Yeah. And it just sounded magnificent. So we've made some adjustments in the pickups, and we've made adjustments in the wiring so that the single coil tones are crystal clear. I mean, I could plug it in and show I you. I think you should. I think you should. But if I go into single coil... sound like an anemic humbucker. That sounds like a beautiful single coil. When humbucking, it's this. Now, I've never plugged this guitar in before. And, and I guarantee not into that amp. And I know it's going to do that because I know it's wired. And I, I'm really happy with the sound of this thing. But there's also this beautiful thickness. But as I go down, it gets more and more single cool sound. Isn't that cool? Yeah, how can you... Because um, I think that that's something... I've always struggled with in that, you know, humbuckers for me should do what humbuckers do and single coils should do what single coils do. And whenever I've either had a, a, a blade style humbucker or a coil tap, to, it's never no, it's worked. No, humbucker, but this isn't. Yeah, so what do you think? Is there any sort of technology from here you'll continue to develop so that it yeah, finds call, its way we, onto we like call custom 24s and stuff? Which is, um, uh, it's a tuned capacitive inductive thing. We figure out like our Neve console how to tune these things the way we want to tune them. This the wiring is actually pretty complicated because in order to get a single, um, sound like a single coil, you just can't ground the middle wire. It doesn't work that way. Right. So there's a lot of switching going on here. And when we do it, we then tune the single coil to the note we want. 
I'm really happy with it. No, I mean it's it's that's that's the holy grail, isn't it? One pickup that can do everything. Which is different than. Is it still hum cancelling when it's single coil, or do you? Absolutely not. So you get the sixty cycle hum if you, you know, because that's. It's a single it coil. It's that, a real one. It's cool, man. That is cool. Um, there are some new colours on a guitar that you made for a, to be fair, not a very well-known guitar player. No, obviously. There's four of them. Four. There. Which is your favourite of the four? The one I like is the tan one that was on the on the bottom right. Oh, I that's like cool. It. Does John have a favourite? I'm sure, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no um, idea what it is. Um, you can ask him. Well, we will try. And what uh, what else is in the pipeline for you in 2019 then? And we can talk about guitars or anything you like. Are there any sporting events you're particularly looking forward to or uh, new pieces of designer clothing you're hoping to find uh, at a bargain anytime soon? I'm a gear slut. <laughs> I really like really good sounding recording gear. Um, I was able to uh, snag a couple of pieces of gear over the last year that sound unbelievably beautiful. I found a really early serial number LA-2A, which is in our world, uh, in the recording world, a compressor that Aretha used to sing through and everybody else. And even if you turn the compressor off, it makes a gorgeous microphone preamp. And so... For me, you want to talk about things I get excited about? When I find a piece of gear in my studio that makes everything sound better, I like it. Well, good for you, man. What is, gets you excited? Um, you like cars? We, ha we, took a, we drove up to Hollywood on Tuesday in a 5-litre Mustang soft top uh, and made a lot of good noises in that car. That was fun. Um, I like cars, watches. Guitars, I like guitars. So what watch do you have on? Rolex Explorer. Um, it's, it's, it's the one that I kind of wear every day because it's, it's the utility watch. How many watch do you have? Not loads, four. Maybe four nice ones. Yeah. But what about you? I'll tell you a, a Rolex story. I bought a big gold ostracizer, you know, self winding yeah. one, for a friend. And I wore it. And it was this big, heavy thing, you know. I like really light watches that look like yeah. Indian, uh, you know, jewelry. Like a, ba yeah. like a band. Yeah, yeah. band. And um, I was wearing it, you know, and I didn't think much of it. And it was heavy, and it kind of bothered me. And one time it popped out a little bit underneath my jacket coat, and I looked at it and went, oh, shit, I really like that. <laughs> and that was a very interesting moment for me. I've never worn one since, but I really liked it. I thought it was very handsome. Well... They are beautiful things. I think there's a lot of synergy between guitars and watches. Just, in, in, you know... John Muir well, thinks that. Well, because there's not... Yeah, it's obviously functional. And all yeah, that. When, but, you know, it has a functional uh, element to it as well. But it's also... There is a certain emotional joy of just looking at something that's unbelievably beautifully crafted. And, and, and some are ostentatious and some are very functional and some are minimalistic. And it's just not... I mean, again... I know the collection John's got is insane. Uh, I have no idea. I've never seen it. Uh, well, it's, he, he talks like it's pretty big. Well, he's just he do, he's he does all the like the he's very engaged with all the social media channels about hot and nice watches. Yeah. So you get the idea. He's into it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Anywho, anywho. So, are you, you going to go home and buy a new car? Um, I mean, that's where you were headed. You said you just got into this Mustang called uh, the Soft Top. You know, but you know, in Europe soft at the moment, convertibles in this country. You know, you know, in Europe, there's a ticking clock really for all the major cities banning diesel and petrol cars. So it's um, it's kind of banning. Yeah, yeah. So you, you petrol cars and diesel cars. Yeah. So I think it's Paris is the first one to go, and I think it's 2020 or something. It's like that's it. If you haven't got a hybrid. Car, you know, I, and I get it environmentally. It's you know, it's a major but it polluter, costs isn't it? More money to get the electricity than it. I've probably not looked into that argument enough, but that. So at the moment, I've got a fairly uh, big diesel guzzling Porsche KN, uh, which, from when I bought it to what it's worth now, has tanked because everybody knows that these cars aren't even going to be <laughs> legal for much longer. So, so, they, so will they quit selling the petrol? Uh, they can't stop. Is it just diesel cars that are going rather than... But I think it might just be... It's everything, is it? I think... I, 
Right. right. I think they're, they're long term, they're saying in the next 30 years, so they're I just heard all gone. There was a study in England mm -hmm. about driving on the other side of the road, and they calculated how much it would cost to switch over. Oh. It would bankrupt the country. And everyone would just ignore it anyway. And anyway, we don't drive on the wrong side of the road. It's everybody I else drives on the wrong side I of the road. It's the other side. Okay. Did and I do, and do you know side? why? Do you know why? It's all Napoleon's fault. You have to rewind the tape to see if I said wrong. Well, maybe you didn't. Napoleon's but I, fault. It's Napoleon's fault because what used to happen was the Duke of Wellington with his armies, they always used to walk on the left side of the road. And so he would make his troops walk on the right side of the road so they could see each other coming around the corners sooner. That's how, it, that's how it happened. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. I kid you not. So it's Napoleon's fault. If it hadn't you been why, for the little short, train, grumpy French man, we'd all be driving on the left-hand side. Distance apart that they are? You know why the rails of the train are this distance apart? No. Because that's the distance that the carriage's wheels were, and they wanted them on the same size. Honestly. I don't even know why we... And that could be wrong, but that's what I heard. I mean, look, you're the Wikipedia of guitars. Exactly. I am not the Wikipedia of train tracks. <sighs> Is anybody famous going to be on the guitar stand this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Can we meet? What, can we be in the room? Is that allowed? I can arrange it. I can that's arrange it, really. It. But, wait, I'm being looked at like... No, it's him. I'm, the... I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I am like a five-year-old. When did you do multi? When was the first multi-scale PRS that you built, or is that About it? About a year and a half ago. I, I, I always thought I think they angle them too much, and so I, I spent a lot of time getting it so that you could play the low ones and not have to cock your hand too much mm -hmm. and play the high ones. And I think it turned out really well. I'm loving. So, I'm loving the fact you didn't just take the um, current, like, well, that's how you angle all the frets and the bridge. You just you redid it all. The whole thing. Amazing. And as a matter of fact, I wouldn't participate in a guitar that can't be played. The problem is you really have to angle your hand so wildly yeah. and so yeah. wildly you couldn't play the guitar. Nobody plays chords on those things anyway, do they? Just go, wee, 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 and that's it. So it probably doesn't. I think you just ended the interview exactly <laughs> where you wanted. Whittly, 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 which we used to call typing. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Man, it's always a pleasure. Never a chore. Love your guitars. Good luck Thank with you. everything. Thank you, everybody. Subscribe, like, assuming you even made it to the end of this video. Okay, bye.